हेलो एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न व्हाट इज ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एंड टोटल कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग सो उप्स इज एक्चुअली द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोग्रामिंग और यू कैन से व्हाट यू कैन से हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न व्हाट इज ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एंड देन आई विल गिव यू वन एग्जांपल और यू कैन से वन वन एग्जांपल हेलो एवरीवन in this video we are going to learn object oriented programming first we are going to see the definition of object oriented programming after that we are going to move to all the style of object oriented programming or you can say all the methods of object oriented programming so uh, object oriented programming is a programming paradigm that revolves around the concept of objects it is a style of programming that uses objects which are instances of classes to model and organize the behavior and data of a program java is a strongly object oriented programming language and ops is the core of its design so in a simple word we can say that it is a it, it is a style of programming or a way of programming where we can control the flow of data we can we can really here control the flow of data you will understand understand once understand clearly when you will see the example of all the styles of programming or all the methods of oops concept so like uh, inheritance polymorphism encapsulation and abstraction when you will see the this all programmings then you will understand what i am saying and what is actually oops concept is so now let's move to the next slide uh before uh, be, uh before uh see the example of what you can say inheritance encapsulation poly polymorphism polymorphism and abstraction we will see some basic terminologies uh and the, uh, some terms are here is modularity first one is mo modularity that is what is mod modularity modularity promotes the concept of uh, what you can say तीन मिनट और बात कर मेरा और रुकना क्या है पेन से याद रख लेता हूँ इसी वाले वीडियो में कितना नंबर से स्टार्ट करा था थ्री फिफ्टी से हेलो एवरीवन in this video we are going to learn object oriented programming the concept of object oriented programming and all the you can say style of oops programming that is inheritance polymorphism encapsulation and abstraction so first here we are going to cover here uh, the definition of object oriented programming that is it is a it it is a uh, java programming that revolves around the concept of objects it is a style of programming that uses object which are instances of class to model and organize the behavior and data of a program java is a strongly object oriented programming language and op is at the core of its design so in a simple word we can say that oops is actually a style of programming where you can what you can say control the flow of data and later you will understand clearly when you will see some programs so a uh, uh, oops is actually a style of programming where 
you control the data means how data is to be accessed where data is to be accessed and where we will define what you can say methods and how we can access the methods so this all is controlled by oops so now let's move to the next slide so in this slide we are going to cover some basic terminologies that is modularity constructor access modifiers interface and abstract class so first is modularity oops promotes promotes the concept of modularity by breaking down complex system into a smaller manageable units called classes with well defined interfaces it means that uh, uh, what is modularity in a simple means in a simple way we can say that when we are going to write a big codes so like means uh, when we are going to build what you can say a website so in that we are we have to write too many classes means too many classes or you can say too many objects and methods so this is all the breaking down of the code in um, different classes so they so that we can easily manage understand or extend all the classes so extend actually means we can access the one classes in another class now another one is a constructor constructor i have already what you can say explained but let's see here also constructor are a special method used to initialize an object when they are created uh, they have the same name as the class and are called when an object is initiated so uh, it is uh, what you can say constructor is the same name as a class and it is used to initialize an object and next one is access modifiers access modifiers are public private protected and package private or you can say a default modifier control the visibility and accessibility of class field and method so here all like class field and method this all are access through what you can say access modifier when we use a public so we can access all the classes field and methods anywhere and when we define a private to a particular variable or methods then we can use that methods inside that class only and when we use a private as a class we can't access that class in a in an another class so this all are you can say access modifier but uh, after after you can see after when you will see some programs you will understand what is actually access modifiers are and the next one is interface and abstract classes java allows you to define interface and abstract classes which defines a set of methods that implementing a classes must provide uh, so here uh, we can see that what actually interfaces uh, and uh, interface and abstract uh, it is a set of method when we means it is actually uh, what you can say set of method that defines how the class is to be implemented interface and abstract class enable design by contract and multiple inheritance of the behavior so i'm not going to deep dive into interface and abstract classes now uh, but later you will understand when you will see some what you can say program so you will understand how actually what actually uh, interface and abstract classes is so now let's move to the next slide Hmm. inheritance this is the first style of object oriented programming or you can say uh, what method so hmm, what is inheritance first we will see the definition then i will give you one example so you can easily understand inheritance allow you to create a new class called the subclass or a derived class by inheriting a properties and behavior and behavior from an existing class called the super class or a base class so in an inheritance we will always have a super class and a super class that is known as a base class and a sub class that is known as a drive class so and this is the this is the first key points and the second is code reusability you can use the code anywhere 
and you can access in the code anywhere when you like means in that particular class instead of or and another thing is a method overriding when you will understand all this when you'll see now one now the example of inheritance method overriding it means that the method is defined in a what you can say super class can be can be override in a subclass so i'm going to give one example about the inheritance we have already we see everyone gives example of like mother what you can say mother and father or son or father and son means father is uh, what you can say uh, uh, father gives all the or uh, we can say some of these some of its what you can say uh, functionality or you can say some of its inheritory uh, functions like uh, what its nose ears eyes this all to its its cell or his children so uh, i'm going to give one technical example that is the uh, what you can say version of the android android version it means that uh, the version right now you are using is actually derived from the previous version it means that android 12 or android uh, 12 uh, android 12 or android 13 so android 13 is or have all the functionality of android 12 also but some new upgrades they are not going to write all the code from scratch in uh, android 13 they import all the codes from android 12 and they have added some of the or you can say they have overrided some of the methods in what you can say from the android 12 version so this is the best example i think you will understand so now let's see the example of inheritance so here i'm going to create one File, the name of the file is inheritance dot java inheritance dot java so first we are going to create one class so here we are going to take the example of a animal so we are creating one class and the name of the class is an animal and this class have one method what animals do they eat also so the name of the method is public I'm using here so that it can access outside of, of outside of this class also public void here I am taking because this this method is not going to return anything and this is the name of the function Sorry. this function is going to print eating and we are going to create another class and the name of that class is dog we know that dog also eat bark the same thing dog also does so here we have created this class animal and in dog in dog we want to use that this method it means that we know that uh, dog also eats so we need this method but we we don't need to write all this again just we can import from here how we can import or how we can access that a method we will use extend dot extend animal and after that after that we will we are going to create what you can say one method for dog class and the name of the method is bark word bark and this will return
this will return barking so this is completed here so now here we are going to write main class main class we are going to create an object of the <coughs> class dog So now we have created an object of the class dog. So if we want to access, so here now we can access this method and this method from here, here only. Let's see how we can access. If we want to access it, then just we'll write object dot it. And if we want to access bark method just we can write bark object dot bark so now let's see what the output is coming i think you have understand this see here eating and barking so here here you can see this this dog class have extended or you can say uh, what you can say access this uh, eat method from the class animal by using extend and in a main class we have created an object and we have accessed both the methods so this is the inheritance it means that this is this is a super class and this is a subclass this is a super class and this is a subclass this is a father and this is a you can say a son so it took the functionality from here to here that's all for inheritance now let's move to the next topic that is encapsulation encapsulation the key idea behind in encapsulation is to hide the internal implementation detail of an object and control access to its data by providing a well-defined interface getter and setter for interacting with objects attribute. So, uh, in cap to understand the encapsulation, let's take example of the capsules. Capsules uh, means what you can say. Uh, wrapping of the data you can say that we have wrapped uh, all the things in a single unit so we don't know what inside the capsules are there we don't know the functionality what inside in that border is doing and what means what is that border is made up of we don't know just we know from the outside and we can see from outside only so it's uh, it, the main method of you can say the main uh, idea behind the encapsulation is to hide the internal implementation details we, are, we don't want to share the internal details we can say we don't want to say what you can say we don't want to share what actually our internal algorithm is and we can we can what you can say control that access to a particular class or you can say to another class using encapsulation and to access when we when we what you can say when we use a private to that particular variable or in that particular class then to access that variable or you can say access that method we will use getter and setter encapsulation help in achieving a data security and data integrating by preventing authorization access or modification of an object state now you will understand after seeing this example and here are some of the benefits of the in encapsulation data hiding we can hide a data means that encapsulation hides, hides the internal details of an object exposing only the essential attributes and method which enhances the security and maintainability of the maintain maintainability of the object or you can say code control 
it provides a level of control over how data is accessed and modified along with to enforce rules and constraint on data modularity again same modularity we can what you can say <clears throat> uh, what you can say break down the codes in a, a small unit so easily it can be accessible flexibility we can easily change the internal implementation without affecting the external code or external class so now let's see the example of encapsulation so you will easily understand Now let's create the class. Mm, what we should create the name of the class that is in capsulation capsulation dot Java. So this we have created the class so now first now let's the let's take the example of a student so first we are we are creating one class that is student okay this class uh, what you can say we are going to write a variable that is this variable is set to be a private so that it can't be accessed outside of this class but how we will access this i will say you know we will use getter and setter to this one private in age name and age we have taken two variables that is private name and age a string this uh, this i'm assuming that this you already knows string into what is this all are now we are going to create getter and setter to create getter and setter we will use public so this can this is ex what you can say easily be accessible this is the type and the name of the method is get name This is the getter this will return name and another one setter setter that is public word set set name this is set name so is equal to name and another one is age to set age and to get Edge, I guess. Ah. Public int get edge and it should return edge. And another reason this is a better and another is a setter that is. Public word set edge int edge this dot edge edge this all you should remember this that this is used to set the name this dot edge means edge name 
this all we here we use now this setter and getter is completed so using this what you can say setter and getter we can access all this of what you can say variable from here so now let's see in a main class uh, main class after that we are going to create object this is the object we have created so now if we want to pass the name of the because here we in this set name we have taken an argument so here we can provide an argument using student dot set name is jack and we can set ages 34 so how we will access how we are going to access this all now we can easily write that if you want to what you can say if you want to what you can say store the name uh, Jack and the age 34 we need to have one that is string student name is equal to student dot get name and int Student age equal to student get age. So now we can easily access this. What you can say this name and this age using this variable. So now just now just we have to print out. the name the name is student name plus and the age is Vintage. So now let's see how the output is coming. The name is see in the output. The name is Jack and the edge is 34. So in this uh, what you can say in this example first to be what you can say. <coughs> write the name of the class or created a class after that to be used to name that is uh, what you can say um, name and age to variable we have defined that we kept as a private that is not accessible uh, that is not access outside of this class but we we want to what you can say access this particular what you can say name and age outside of this class so we have created a setter and getter so this class c this here setter and getter when we'll what you can say define this in a part uh, different uh, what you can say for uh, different file or different class and if we access this uh, get, uh, what you can say um, variable from this class to this class we don't know whether means what this functionality contains what means uh, what they have taken because uh, this whole 
this whole um, student class will be in a separate file and this main class will be in a separate file so um, that is this all thing is not relatable on that particular time because you can say and not re relatable for a simple person who don't know actually what the inside functionality is and how many objects what how many variables are defined in that so we don't anyone don't know when uh, when a new member or you can say when a uh, new person sees that code so you will just see this one this particular code so this all the internal data is being hidden and this is not simply accessible uh, from here first we have to create a getter and setter that's all so now this is enough for this video now let's move to the next slide so that is polymorphism 